Howdy folks! So as you can hear by the noise uh, in the background, I uh, finally have my new file server and uh, depending on when this video goes out, you uh, may or may not have been introduced to it uh, yet, but of course there will be quite a few videos uh, on it, so uh, uh, look forward to seeing those. But uh, one of the interesting things that I discovered while I was doing uh, the initial power-up of that system with all the disks in it uh, was that the system basically didn't power up at all. Uh, the system looks like it went into an overcurrent and uh, shut down immediately. The power supplies, uh, the two kilowatt power supply shut down. Um, and so it, things were very strange during the first power up. Um, but those problems went away and one of the problems that persisted was uh, this disc, um, it, its activity light, its blue activity light on the front back plane uh, never lights up. Uh, no matter where this thing is on the back plane, it never lights up and all the other discs do. And so the problem follows this disc, and it's kind of odd as to what's going on. And this disc is actually the disc that uh, had the fire on it when that uh, Molex to SATA adapter um, blew up uh, about a year ago. And so you can see the connector's a little damaged here. And uh, anyway, uh, pin 11 of the SATA power connector is used for that disc uh, activity LED. And it's only used by backplanes, of course. A regular SATA power connector doesn't, doesn't use that pin, doesn't connect that pin. And so what I'm thinking is that uh, sort of what explains all of this is that this drive um, during you know, that, that fire uh, somehow damaged that circuit that comes out to that pin. And uh, initially when I tried to power this up with something connected to that pin, it, something shorted and it killed the power supply. Uh, and ultimately that surge probably cleared the short and that's why this thing works now. But whatever is connected to pin 11, whatever drives that pin, is dead on this board. And even though the drive works, uh, that pin doesn't. And so I'd, I want to replace this board uh, because I, I just I don't like knowing that there could be something wrong here that could potentially you know, arc out or, or do something bad. I, I, it's, it's a risk I don't want to take. So ultimately, I'd like to replace this board, and I do happen to have another disc of the exact same model and uh, this this disc has failed um, basically uh, it's it's mechanically not super okay uh, one of the heads I think is gone so even though you can use three quarters of the disc uh, and I still do I use this to move files around um, which is perfectly adequate it just doesn't have a you know, the partition table doesn't go all the way to the end of the disc I've got its uh, controller board here and so what I'm thinking of doing is taking uh, this uh, serial flash uh, and just basically swapping it between these two boards and that way I can use this board on this drive with the correct calibration data uh, from this and uh, hopefully avoid any future problems. I can get my LED back and then I can sort of stop worrying about what's gone on in this board. So uh, the first thing before I start is I'm going to validate that these are exactly the same uh, boards which I probably should have done before I started this video but uh, they are exactly the same, exact same rev and everything, which is excellent. So, um, otherwise, you know, you can't be guaranteed that the BIOS will work properly. So yeah, I'm just going to take this board off, and then I'm going to fire up my hot air, and I'm just going to swap these uh, serial flash chips, put this board back, uh, put this drive with this board back in, and hopefully um, the kernel and the backplane and everything don't freak out. Um, I did this before, I have done this before, um, and I did this back with a DM RAID array. Uh, about five years ago and the uh, that's that sort of like Intel fake raid because I had a system that needed uh, to be compatible with both Linux and Windows software raid so fake raid pretty much is the only way you can do it that Intel rapid storage technology thing and anyway the um, the BIOS was super unhappy with me doing that because it, it thought that there were two disks with the same serial number and uh, their firmware was not really designed to handle that and so the BIOS kind of shit itself um, and I ended up having to boot into Linux and using some DM RAID commands. I was able to get my data back, but that sort of told me, you know, never do that again. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm, here I am doing it again. Um, you know, worst case scenario, it's a RAID Z2 array, so this, the, the array's already degraded, I've already pulled this out. So I can just go to my sort of electronic store locally and get another drive. So I'm, I'm prepared to buy a new drive in the event that uh, this goes horribly, horribly wrong. But uh, anyway, yeah, so I am going to uh, 
interesting. They actually have different. They actually have different uh, different brand of SD RAM. One of them is a Winbond chip, and the other one is a Samsung chip. Um, however, if that's irrelevant, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna fire up the hot air station and uh, swap these over. Okay, so this is the original board with the screwed up connector. I've taken off its uh, spy flash chip and I have soldered it onto this uh, donor board here. I've tried to clean up the flux at least a little bit, so I'm better than most here. And I'm just gonna put this back on the drive. So this is, a, I shouldn't say back on the drive, I should say onto the new drive, because uh, this has never been on here before. And I'm just going to insert it uh, back into the server. So I haven't actually rebooted the machine since I um, took this disk out. The, this disk has been out of the server for under... It's been like 15 minutes, actually. So I'm hoping that I can just uh, tell ZFS um, you know, that the, the disk is, is back. And uh, it hopefully won't have to resilver all 4 terabytes. Uh, if everything goes okay, um, that would be my my hope uh, is that it, it doesn't have to resilver anything because uh, normally ZFS is very intelligent when it comes to this kind of stuff and it can just realize oh you know I've only written you know a megabyte of data since this disk disappeared so I'm only gonna resilver that one megabyte it's really impressive you don't have to rebuild an entire array if you've just lost sync for a bit so anyway uh, let's uh, grab the camera and plug this in and uh, see what happens okay so I've checked the uh, ZFS output it's uh, basically said the device faulted so I cleared it and it says it's unavailable which makes sense because it's unplugged so I just put it back uh, put the board back on the drive put it back in its caddy and so we're gonna put this in for the first time and uh, we're gonna see what happens um, if the drive boots which I hopefully it does. I should be able to hear it spin up even over these fans. Uh, they make a pretty loud kathunk when they boot. And uh, I want to see that light flash. That'll tell me that there's activity because of course this board should not be borked. So that light should work. So uh, here goes. Oh, you see that? I saw the light come on. I didn't actually hear the disc spin up, but uh, maybe maybe these fans are louder than I thought. So let me go check with the OS and uh, see what it says. And so I just checked the logs, and uh, here we go. So it has detected my uh, four terabyte drive. So uh, it's SDH, so I'm going to try and uh, import this into the pool, and uh, we'll see uh, how it resilvers. So after messing with uh, ZFS for a few minutes, trying to get it to replace a disk with itself, um, which was a little bit harder than I thought it would be, uh, basically I thought that the disk was still part of an active pool, so I, what I did instead was I offlined the disk, and then I onlined the disk, and it brought it back online, because it has the same, um, same serial number, and then what it did was uh, it tried to read from it, realized it was out of sync, and then it did a resilver. It only re resilvered 32 megs, so that was pretty fast. And uh, so it's online, and it's all working, so... Uh, yeah, uh, everything everything went exactly as it should have. Um, everything went kind of the way I wanted it to the last time I did this five years ago. So uh, yeah, it, it is possible to switch the uh, flash chips. I mean, it's common knowledge to be able to do that. It's super easy if you've got a hot air rework station. And uh, yeah, so the LEDs work. Uh, let me just show you that. So here's the uh, front of the server. And uh, if we wait, there you go. You can see that the LED is flashing so uh, that board is working correctly and there's no more funny business and uh, I feel a lot better even though the old disc was working I feel a lot better um, seeing that and knowing that whatever weird power issues I was having was most likely caused by that fucked up connector and uh, as we all know SATA connectors are kind of poorly designed and you know they burst into flames and stuff and so I just wanted to get that out of that system and so uh, the other board also works. So the you know I haven't lost the other donor drive. I've just swapped the swapped the swapped the flashes, and so uh, I can still continue to use that kind of sort of messed up drive as a sort of uh, big uh, tote around thing until it finally gives up the ghost. And 
you know, the mechanics fail, but yeah, so it was, uh, it was a success. I uh, cannot say I was planning on doing this the day I set up my server, but uh, I'm glad that I did it. So anyway, hopefully this was uh, an interesting video for you, and as always, thanks for watching.